This is Minneapolis Music Month, and uh, we're pleased to uh, be doing this till the end of March. And a guy who has been uh, an integral part of the music here on our show, we've uh, really enjoyed his CD playing it since uh, he sent it along. It's called Connections. He's a great vocalist out of the Twin Cities, also an educator, and we'll talk all, all about that. And uh, we're going to spend some time with him this afternoon here on WVOF 88.5 FM in Fairfield, Connecticut, and the Upper Room. So we welcome Bruce A. Henry. How you doing, Bruce? I'm doing great. Hi, Joe. So uh, we really enjoyed Connections as, as soon as he sent it along. And, uh, you know, really, really ambitious record. I mean, you, you, you've got some really cool songs, and, and you you changed up some some of the standard arrangements and, and your originals as well. So, tell us about putting this record together and uh, the uh, beginnings of the CD. How did that take shape? Well, it took shape. I um, I uh, it was uh, it took me one year to record it and uh, one year to write songs and to research the material that I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. um, so I started that process and. Uh, we have a great arranger I worked with here, uh, Adi Yashaya, okay. who's in this area. He's worked with uh, everybody from Aretha Franklin to Whitney Houston, and and he he's, he happens to be a friend of mine. So he put his touch on a, a number of songs on the record, and just enlisted a bunch of the best musicians I could find around here. Yeah, I mean, combined with your voice, I mean, I'm looking at some of the players on here. We'll talk uh, about mm. about a bunch of them. Um, you mentioned the arrangement, uh, the the key part, your, your buddy with the arrangement, what what uh, exactly did he have to do on, on that? Well, uh, he worked on In the Sentimental Mood. Yeah, a great job there. By the way. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, just put uh -huh. it, you know, kind of a, a little acid jazz UK style touch on there. Uh-huh. And I'm just trying to make it a little contemporary sounding. Now, my special guest right now, Bruce A. Henry, who's a phenomenal uh, vocalist and uh, great, great person and, and out of the Twin Cities. Now, I know you, you grew up in, in Mississippi, West Point, and, and we got one of our listeners out there who's the blues man. I know he's a fan of Howlin' Wolf. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, so out there, uh, what was it like growing up in the South and, and gravitating towards music? How did that start for you? Well, you know, I actually didn't grow up in the South. I wish I... I was born in the South. That's, okay. that's totally correct. Okay, right. Uh, but they carried me out of there. I was, <laughs> I was about two weeks old, <laughs> uh -huh. and I moved to, to Chicago. Okay, and uh, another music stronghold. So yes. Is, is that where you got into music? I got into music, yes, in Chicago. I, I was raised, uh, like so many performers, I was, I was raised in, in the church on music and uh, on the west side of Chicago. And um, at the time, you know, I didn't know it at the time, but there were all kinds of gospel legends that would come through my church, the Barrett Campbell sisters, uh, Alex Bradford, uh, the Holloway sisters. And I was just a little kid soaking all this in, and I, st I started singing there. And, and your father had a big influence on you. Uh, that's what I was reading. Uh, tell, tell us about uh, your dad and, uh, you know, how, how did he have his influence on you? Well, dad... Um, was a jazz musician. Um, he still plays in church. He just plays gospel now. But when he was a young man, I understand when he was 12 years old or so, he toured the South uh -huh. back in the old days um, with the Harlem Swing Cats. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. And, uh -huh. and um, so in my earliest memories were listening to my dad play and sing gospel. And then he would play Duke Ellington and Count Basie. So that, you know, that got me interested in jazz at the earliest of ages. So. So how about getting together for those family uh, gatherings? Do you get you guys still jam at the house? Yeah, we do. You know, uh -huh. <laughs> right. we we all sing. My 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 mother sings the choir parts. <laughs> my sister is a soloist. Has a wonderful voice, though. She's not a professional. Dad sings, so we often break out spontaneously in music. Now, where was that moment that when you when you opened your mouth and started to sing that you kind of said? I've got something that other people can't do. Do you, do you remember any defining moment? You know, it's always been such a part of me that uh, I can't really say that, you know, because I was singing it at age five. Um, I remember, you know, I knew showbiz was in me because I remember when I was five, I used to dance for money. Uh -huh. <laughs> right, <laughs> That's right. another show. <laughs> uh, how, how the steps these days? <laughs> the steps are, you know, I, I'm a jazz singer now. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little twirl, right? That's about <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. That's about it. So right now my special guest uh, is Bruce A. Henry, uh, based out of the Twin Cities area. And uh, we'll talk about uh, Minneapolis and St. Paul and... Uh, 
Bruce A. Henry. You can go to his website right now uh, where you can uh, find out about his great CD, The Connections, and, and great uh, background on himself. It's BruceAHenry.com, and uh, he's our special guest right now here on WVOF. Wanted to uh, get into a song right now, which leads off the album, and uh, I'm impressed when I see uh, Gil Scott Heron and John Coltrane's song <laughs> up there. And Gil Scott Heron actually was the first person I ever saw live in concert wow. uh, open up for Stevie Wonder. So how did you decide to choose two legends, uh, the Equinox song? Well, I, I just like music that has a little spiritual bass to it, and I was listening to some Gil Scott Heron, and of course, as a jazz musician, you know, one of my... I just love John Coltrane um, mm -hmm. musically, spiritually, and the combination. I just couldn't resist the combination of those two together. So, so this song uh, features the great vocals of Bruce A. Henry, and uh, we'll listen to it right now. It's from the CD Connections, and uh, this is the Upper Room with Joe Kelly, and we're here on WV. Wow, an amazing voice right there, and and yes, that's all your vocals, right? Yes, you you got quite a range. How how, how uh, big is the the range on uh, your, your voice? It's about three and a half octaves. Uh huh. Yeah. So, wow. Yeah. Do you, do you, do you sing just about every day in, in some form or fashion? <laughs> yes, I do. Uh, yeah, I sing around the house. I sing my scales. I'm practicing songs. I do a number of gigs. So the voice never really gets a chance to cool down. <laughs> right, right. You know. And, uh, you know, Bruce A. Henry is my special guest. Uh, the CD is Connections. And, uh, He's based out of the Twin Cities, and besides uh, being a dynamite vocalist and jazz singer, uh, quite an educator. You mentioned uh, being a historian and, and educator. Tell tell us all that you know is on your plate as far as educating people about music. Well, I used to teach at uh, McNally Smith, okay, uh, which was formerly Music Tech, and I, I taught jazz improvisation, vocal improvisation there, which is just one of, just one of the things I love to do. Uh, I've developed a curriculum which is called the Evolution of African American Music. And what it does is it, it teaches people about the roots of so many of the musics that we enjoy were greatly influenced or pioneered by, by my ancestors. Mm -hmm. And so I try to make the connection between, say, blue style, gospel style of singing, jazz style of singing, uh, with African music, specifically West African music. So uh, I teach that in workshops and in clinics uh, for novices, for teachers, and everything in between. And it's just a curriculum I've developed, and that's one of my true passions is just spreading the knowledge about this music. Now, now I, I guess I, something came to mind about, uh, you know, going back in the history of African-American music from mm -hmm. years past to today, going out to, to shows sometimes, especially like blues concerts, uh, you don't you don't see uh, a big crowd of African American people coming out to the shows where the music which, you know, came from that community. Um, how how do you go about educating people and, and uh, you know have you noticed that? I totally agree with you. Yeah, and I'm just amazed that you know the state of that kind of. And, and how about in the jazz world too? Do you see that? In, uh, it's the same thing in jazz in my area. Okay. You no, know, I can't speak for other areas, but we often, as performers, we talk about that here, mm -hmm. where we perform for mostly uh, white audiences. Right, right. And uh, believe me, we're happy to be performing, but... <laughs> yeah, right. But yeah. Uh, we miss the fact, and so somehow this culture, and uh, it's m it's missing a lot, a lot of black youths, and I don't know where the finger lies. I mean, you could point at the educational system, you could point at parents for not passing the love of this music down, the media, whatever, mm -hmm. uh, but that's one of the reasons why I, I teach this program that I do, the Evolution of African American Music, is and I try to get it out into the community to spread the love, to spread the history, because oftentimes they don't know. They just don't know. They haven't been exposed to it. Mm -hmm. And in these days when people are, you know, musical, cuts of musical programs, and, you know, you can understand why maybe they don't know right. what's going on, what's happened. And, and I guess there's nothing like going in to make a, a jazz record and just turn it on the mics and the tape and... Uh, taking the best take straight through and putting it on the CD, you know, yeah. the way you guys work, yeah. Yeah, it is, and that's a <laughs> unfamiliar process to a lot of the young folks. Right. You know. But at least you could play live and, and sound nice. Tell, tell us about um, some things happening in the Twin Cities with you and your band coming up. Well, we we'll, we'll have a, a semi-house gig at Rossi's Blue Star, okay. which is a, a nice jazz club here in town. So we're there every month 
for about five days. Uh, I'll be rec uh, recording a live record sometime in the next couple months on the, the Dakota, the Dakota Jazz label. Oh, they got a label? Okay, cool. Yeah, they uh -huh. have a label, and Barbara Morrison is on there, and uh, on uh, Cheeto Herrera. And hey, so I, I just had an Cheeto on a few days ago. I talked with him. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, nice guy, nice guy. He's, he's a very nice guy. Yeah. So, um, you know, I'm really excited about that. Mm -hmm. and some chances for some distribution of that, uh, national distribution with that product. And uh, so that's what I'll be gearing up for the next two months and just doing what I do. Yeah, and, and the thing that you do great is, is your incredible uh, vocalist and, and singer. We got uh, another song ready to, to push play on, which uh, features your great friend Gwen Matthews on uh, background vocals. Yeah. And I noticed uh, some of the horn heads uh, adding some horns on here, uh, uh -huh. Mighty Mighty, and tell us about uh, you choosing this one to include it on the record. Well, I heard this song uh, by Doug Kern, the great Doug Kern, mm -hmm. and um, I liked, he, he, he sped it up, and uh, it was Earth, Wind, and Fire tune, mm -hmm. and so the whole idea is that this is McCoy, Tyner, Doug Kern, uh, meets Earth, Wind, and Fire, meets Bruce Henry. Right. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I gravitated towards how you guys did this right away. So yeah. We're going to listen to it right now. In the meantime, while you listen, uh, if you're online, you can uh, go to BruceAHenry.com and uh, definitely support his music. And, and the CDs of available at CDBaby.com too, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's from Connections. This is uh, Bruce A. Henry and Mighty Mighty. <laughs> And that was a great version of Mighty Mighty from my special guest uh, this afternoon here. Minneapolis Music Month, uh, we're just a few days away, but of course we support uh, you guys' music throughout the year. And uh, Bruce is with us, and uh, thanks so much to join us. Yes. Yeah, so, so working with some of the top musicians out in the Twin Cities, and uh, the liner notes are great, and uh, your sharp dresser as well. I love your suit <laughs> in, inside there, yeah. Thank so you. So, uh vocalist and educator and also uh, I wanted to ask you I mean you've got such knowledge about uh, music and uh, African-American music uh, what, what do you listen to, uh, as of late for for inspiration or uh, have you picked up anything new music that you really feeling um right now uh, I would say no uh-huh <laughs> <laughs> to be honest right no uh -huh. <laughs> you know I, I I'm going back in time, you know, it, it, I'm, I'm listening right now. I'm doing listen to all the Andy Bay I can. Okay, you know, he does some contemporary music, but I've been just kind of rediscovering my roots. Uh, and I've been listening to Tony Bennett and just trying to capture a new sense. You know, like what I did with Connections was try to expand the standards, you mm -hmm. know, right, and bring them into the future. Now I'm going back into the past and seeing how they can expand me. Because I learned something when I listened to some of the greats, some of the older cats, you know. And that's what I've been doing, just download and buy almost some of the old legends. Now, now you're classically trained uh, over at the Chicago Conservatory of Music. Yeah. And uh, you, what was your decision to, to go for, for such an education? And would you recommend that for, for all vocalists? I really would. Um, you know, I, I teach in my workshops that uh, if you can understand blues, mm -hmm. if you can understand the basic elements of blues singing, that it will really help you sing any, any, any American music, uh, blues, jazz, gospel, et cetera, et cetera. But um, the thing that classical music helped me so much with was um, voice health, maintaining proper voice health, projection, uh, flexibility, drill. So oftentimes when I, if I find myself maybe I'm, my voice isn't at its best, I, I, I fall back on some of my classical techniques. And if I want to expand my flexibility and articulation, I, I, I do some drills that are based on the classical music experience. So it still works, even though I haven't sung classical music in, you know, in almost a lifetime now. Uh -huh. um, it, it, it helps me and informs my music every day. So if you're listening to, to other artists on stage, you could tell right away if they're struggling, uh, you know, performance-wise with their voice? Oh, yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, a little too much. <laughs> right, right, right. 
I'm not fun. I'm not fun to watch concerts with, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> or watch the Grammy Awards with, or oh, yeah, whatever. Sure. You know, I'm sure. But right. uh, too critical. You could tell right away if, if they got a backing track, right? Oh, I can most of the time, yeah. Uh huh. Right. And you know, I like all kinds of singing. I mean, I'm not like a jazz snob. You uh-huh. know, I, I love eclecticism, mm-hmm. and I just like all kinds of music from rock and roll to whatever. The one thing I'm a snob about is like intonation. <laughs> So okay. if somebody's out of tune, it bugs me. <laughs> right, right. It really does. So so Bruce A. Henry's website, uh, bruceahenry.com, and uh, the CD Connections, uh, you can go right there. And also cdbaby.com, just type in at the search Bruce A. Henry, and it's cool. You can order it right from your computer. And, uh, you know, you spoke a little bit before about getting ready to uh, release in, in the future uh, a live album. Yeah. Um, how many performances have you been pouring over or is it just one that you you felt was uh the one well this will actually be recorded live all in one night oh, like okay. we'll do uh two nights uh-huh and we'll take the best of those nights okay and right. make it and then it'll be some songs that i've never uh perfor- performed or recorded before and then there'll be some retakes on some some old new material so so tell us about some of the musicians you've been working with as of late um out in the Twin Cities. I know a lot of the names familiar to us and, and probably to our listeners, but who you been grooving with? Well, I've, I've been working with Peter Shimke right, right. quite a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, Jay Young. Um, Jay Young is just one of my favorite musicians. It's, anytime I get a gig, he's the first person I call. <laughs> he's a great bass right. player. Uh-huh. Um, and I work with Kevin Washington. He's just of a movable feast. He's just a a dynamo on the drums and mm-hmm. Daryl Boudreaux with the sounds of blackness. Um, Dean McGraw, who is just an eclectic uh, guitar player, he plays everything from Irish music to originals to new age to jazz. Um, and uh, I know I'm leaving off somebody, but those that's the basic crew of yeah. people. And I, I know uh, Esther Godinez and, and Gwen Matthews are, are your dear friends. So yeah, yeah they 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 are my dear friends. Right, right. <laughs> Now, uh, we alluded to, uh, or you alluded to, uh, putting a little uh, modern-day spin to, to a classic, a Duke Ellington classic, in a sentimental mood, which uh, we're going to go out with right now. Um, arranged by Adi. Adi or Adi? Adi. Adi, okay. And uh, you've got Gordy Johnson, Michael Baker, and uh, Mark Henderson, of course, your, your great vocals. Um, when you first heard the arrangement or, or were involved arranging with it, uh, wh- what was your reaction to this take on the song? Well, it was, um, you know, it's, what I did with it, I actually, I put it, I, imp- I came up with the basic scratch arrangement of it, how I wanted it to feel, and in the groove, and I took those, that sketch to Adi, and, and Adi just put the colors on it, and just, <laughs> he turned it out. <laughs> yeah, it's a great take, and uh, this is Bruce A. Henry's uh, performance of the the classic in a sentimental in a sentimental mood and it's from connections you can go to bruceahenry.com he is based out of minneapolis right now and uh gosh i gotta thank you so much for uh finally coming on the show and, and true honor to have you on well thank you very much for having me and i really appreciate the support all right this is bruce a henry right here on wvf in the upper room with joe kelly <laughs>